So from the biggest winner to the biggest loser of the weekend, and that is Gold Coast, Port and the Suns actually play each other this weekend, as we would have it. Stuart Chew, he was almost at a loss following their 78-point loss to Collingwood. I told you, you well, we got taught an absolute lesson tonight. They have taught the Gold Coast Suns a harsh lesson about football at the top level. A lot of these games between the years, and that's where we failed. A school holiday lesson they will remember, and it's a win that will remind everybody what they are chasing. A really disappointing start, and then mentally we looked frazzled. Headaches for that man, yep. Stuart Jew. They keep showing glimpses, and then just when we think they're ready to take the next step, they get put back in their box. And they probably lose a lot of hope, really. I mean, this is a deflating loss you get. And they are still quite a way off mixing it with the best teams and, and playing September footy, unfortunately. It's a disappointing night. Saturday afternoon no was Shrek always music. going to be... No Shrek music for Stuart Dew, You it? want the Shrek music back? No. <laughs> Does it quite fit the storyline, unfortunately? No. But this, no. this game on Saturday afternoon was always going to be a huge test of the Suns' character. Up against the ladder leaders, Collingwood, I don't think many people had tipped them, but many people wanted to see a real contest. And in front of one of their biggest ever home crowds there on the Gold Coast, and the Suns just failed, except for that third quarter. Yeah, they failed miserably. And, and, and what happens now... And this is not... This is just football. A performance like that, on top of a performance recently at the MCG, it just invites the pressure onto the coach, the pressure onto the football club, the players, and the scrutiny over the coach's performance... Uh, sorry, the coach's future at the club. We don't decide that. The game decides where the pressure goes. Now, sometimes people say, oh, the media can ramp it up. There's not a person in football who looked at that performance on the weekend and thought, oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot of people at that, at that club. The way, though, Collingwood would just waltz through the corridor at times. They'd go from their D50 to forward 50 in a matter of seconds and the Suns just looked powerless. Yeah, they did. That can happen in footy. Come on, it can happen. It can. And Collingwood are a very, very good team. But they've got to, they've got to have more fight in them. You've got to run with them. You've got to tackle and harass. They were playing like Carlton were playing for those six weeks, where they were just stodgy and, you know, they think, God, what, what, what are you doing, Carlton? I was watching the game thinking, what, what is happening here? Mental. They were mentally disintegrated. Well, he but, said and, that and post-game, did he, didn't really? he? He said, we lost the battle in between the years. Yeah, they just mentally disintegrated and they tried to catch up and they, and they couldn't do it. But now, now the focus is heavily, not just on Stuart Jew, on Mark Evans as CEO, on the AFL, it's your football club, if this continues, there's going to be some major decisions that have to be made at that club. But unfortunately, with Damien Hardwick available, all attention goes on Stuart Chew, not Mark Evans, it's Stuart Chew, the coach. Do you think the Suns should be reaching out to Hardwick's people? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, Come with the hard ones first night. Well, have they? What's your intel? Have they? Well, you know, I, I think the Suns are an interesting mob. You know, they, they backed in Stuart Dew last year, but I've got no doubt that the club spoke to Alistair Clarkson last year. I've got no doubt. And they made the call to stick with and you. And they made the call to stick with you. Maybe they'll make the call to stick with him again. Mm. But if this continues, and I'm chief executive or I'm president of that club or I'm running the AFL competition, I'll be thinking what's going on up there. And then the club has to make a decision. It's a hard one because I don't, I don't even like to talking about coach sackings and even asking questions of, oh, should they reach out to Hardwick's people? But because Stuart Jew seems like an absolute riffing bloke and he's done such a good job of building this culture and, and, and seeing it through with the Gold Coast Suns over the past six years or so, but there's a great coach available, a triple premiership coach. Now, I don't subscribe to the fact that you can just pluck a great coach and say, right, you go there and make them a great team. I've seen that a couple of times in my life, great coaches. Pagan, Malthouse was another. All right, we're going to pluck you and we're going to put you there and turn them into a great team. Sprinkle your gold dust. That doesn't happen in football. Football's too hard. I believe that clubs and coaches grow together as a group um, and they go through the high, highs and they go through the lows and they build, you know, these buzzwords of today's world of, like, resilience and all that sort of stuff. 
You've got to experience life together as a footy club. So in saying that, would you stick with you? Right now, right now, I would. But we've got eight games. How many games have we got to go, Kath? Come on. Eight. We've got eight games to go. Yep. I think the performance on the weekend, the performance against Carlton the previous time, I think... I think the discussion, if that... If, if more of those games arrive coming home, I think discussions will be had. Yeah, it's a watch this space. I'm not going to sit here and say, Stuart, you should be sacked. No. I, I think that's really unfair. And I don't believe that at that point anyway. Yep.